He says God is good to bring him such a friend. Yes. Case of buy one get one free. The Mark IV is the best machine in the market, and you know it. Thanks, Curry. You can get me a coffee. Thank you. Yep, yep. First thing Monday morning. I'll even deliver it myself. Yeah, okay, Andy. Love to the family. Yeah, you too, mate. Bye. I need a valve, Harry. ASAP. Well, we can do that. What's the rush? We've got to go to Iran again tomorrow. Well, who's a lucky boy, then? What do they use this gear for? for Fertiliser, apparently. A bit high powered for that, isn't it? It's their money. I thought it was all sand out there. Yeah, hello. Gavin. Um, this is Jeff. He's just joined us in from the cold, so to speak. Hello, Mr. Hughes. I'm assigning Jeff to you. I thought you'd get on well together. Did you? Yes, Kevin, I did. Look, I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. You told me you'd get me out when the time was right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that time's right now. Of course, you're entitled to your opinion, but we need you there now more than ever. It's absolutely crucial. You have no idea what it's like there. I can't sleep. I was waiting for a tap on my shoulder, a gun in my ribs. Paranoid in case of fear showing in my eyes or in my voice. What if I don't come back this time, eh? I've got a family to support. Isn't I look after them? Look, Mr. Hughes. Gavin, do you mind if I call you, Gavin? We're not sending you in there with uh, cameras or bugs. You're clean. We simply want you to go in there with your eyes open. Tell us what you see. Now, they brought your visit forward, and that's unusual. And we need to know why. Some sort of test, maybe? An exercise they're doing? Something important they don't want you to see? What if I refuse? Well, refusal's never been an option, has it? You know what they use your machines for? It's us or jail. Still sure a desk job was the right move? Uh, I think so. How bad was it, Ulster? Well, let's just say I'm not entirely unfamiliar with the symptoms Hughes was talking about. Toss up between terror and boredom, right? Keep tabs on friend Hughes as far as you can. The last thing we need out there is a loose cannon. Will this be his last one? It'll be whatever we say it is. I've got to go away again. That's nice for you. Don't be like that, Janice. It's my job. Isn't it always? Yeah, well, I don't need you complaining about the money. Yeah, the money. I thought we'd soon get on to that. Well, what about a six-year-old child who never sees his father? Or when he does, he's half pissed. Well, where to this time, then? Iran. Tomorrow. We were late taking off. I wasn't sure you'd be here. It's wonderful to see you, Mr. Gavin. You too, Farah. You're looking great. So, how have you been? You look a little tired. Oh, price of success. It's been all go for months. But it's good to be back. In the sun again.
should like very much to talk, but in five days I transfer to Isfahan. You change your schedule because next week these rogues begin to celebrate my departure. A present to your children, compliments to my directors. Very kind, very generous. And you have a valve part. It has held us up seriously. Of course. I'm sorry the director's going. He's a great man. On Tuesday night, section and project heads are taking him out to a restaurant. I'm invited too. It's a big honor. Well, I think working with you and achieving what we have has helped me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So you're going somewhere nice? Oh, it's a fish restaurant on a coast road, just north of here. We're all going by coach. Just as well, really. Well, you can't be too careful, can you? Not with all that pineapple juice. <laughs> How is your wife? She must miss you. Oh, I think she copes. Hiya. Mmm. Very nice. I, uh, I don't want to bang on about it, but you really should think of upgrading to the EMX version. It's got a trough volume of more than 3,500 litres. But I can tell you about that tomorrow. And you are sure it can mix the grade of explosives for the warhead? It can mix whatever you want it to mix. Mm, this is really good. You're not missing McDonald's? If I could only find Iranian food in England, I'd be a happy man. <laughs> Why do you allow McDonald's? It's like an invasion by America. Oh, it's convenient. The kids like it. It is a pollution in your society. American films, TV, comic strips, junk food, American promiscuity. Where does it lead you? Will you lose your values? You're unwell? Thus, he was a spy, enemy of the state. For this we offer no forgiveness. But to go back, we believe we must fight to preserve our culture and our faith from the threat of the barbarian. I don't know what you mean by that. It is said that the man who does not have a cause he would die for has nothing to live for. That is the importance of faith. I think Mr. Gavin has had a tiring day. Come in. How are we looking for the debrief? Uh, the Americans are in at noon and the Israelis two hours later. He's on a feeder out of Bandar Abbas this evening, then the Red Eye. Good, because I'm being told their missile program could be ready to go in a matter of weeks. We might be looking at anthrax in the Saudi oil fields. Or nerve gas in Tel Aviv. Farah. She met me at the airport. Is that her first name? Farah Assad, 29. 
PhD in electrical engineering from Tehran University, now PA to the director, Omid Turabi. They're transferring in three days' time to Isfahan. Isfahan is nuclear. If Turabi is moving, the microbiological and chemical research programs must be ready to go. Faris said that they, uh, they brought my visit forward because they were throwing a leaving do for Mr. Turabi. Big bash. They didn't want me to clash with it. Can we be more specific, please? What's the program for Torabi's departure? Faris said that the party um, is on Tuesday night. Uh, a fish restaurant up the coast. Who's going to be there? Everyone, a busload. How big? 12 seats? 50 seats? 20, 25. All the top brass. Section heads. People who run the complex. Thank you, gentlemen. Can you uh, excuse me for a moment? What we have here is Iran's top weapon scientists in a bus on the road in the dark Tuesday night. Thank you, Gavin. If you wouldn't mind just waiting over there a moment. That was very useful. So, uh, what happens now? His information will be carefully assessed and the appropriate action will be taken. What kind of action? Well, that's on a need-to-know basis. You've been with us, what, a month? Wow. Relocation? He's not much used to us now, is he? Well, uh, want it out, and that's what you're getting. What does that mean? A new name, a new place to live, and a new life. I'll tell you more about it on the way. Every time I've asked to get out, they've said no. So why this suddenly? Presumably you told them what they wanted to hear. It wasn't exactly earth-shattering, it was just routine stuff. Look, I'm the new boy, I've no more idea than you have. Well, I'm sorry that isn't good enough. Stop the car. What? I said stop the car! Well over, Mickey. I'm not doing this. I mean, who are you anyway? I met you a week ago and you're, you're telling me to throw my life away, become somebody else. Benny was right. In the end, you have no choice. You cooperate and you get immunity from prosecution. Don't, and you end up in jail. Well, I think I'd rather go to prison than this. This is my life we're talking about it. My wife, my home, my kid. Bollocks to it. If they want you relocated, it's because they absolutely think it's vital. Not just for your safety, but for your family as well. These people will kill you, all of you. Do you still want to get out? If you want to go, you go, on your own. I can't do that. But what about Tom? Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you got yourself into this, whatever it is. They will never let me see him again. And you've been here for him, have you? As if you care. I'm begging you. Please come with me. And give up everything. Everything I've worked bloody hard for. To become Mr. and Mrs. Nobody, I don't think so. You, you can't just throw eight years away. You can't pretend that never happened. No, Gavin. I won't do it. Whatever they tell you, don't believe them. I have done nothing for you to be ashamed of. husband never lived here. It's for your own safety as well as his. How exactly are we supposed to live? You'll have the house and you've got a job. The solicitor will send you the divorce papers. It was your choice, Mrs. Hughes. You bastard! 
bastards. Janice. Okay, two numbers between 1 and 26. A bit like doing the lottery, really, isn't it? Chloe, this isn't the lottery, is it? This is my life we're talking about. It's a new life, but I need a new name. 6-16. Okay, sixth month, 16th day. 6, that's A, B, C, D, E, F, F4, Francis. Frederick? Ferdinand. Finley. Frank. Frank, how about Frank? Okay, 16. P. Prothero. Parsons. Nah. Perry. Perry, yeah, I've got an uncle, Perry. You don't say. Frank. Perry. Well, here's to it. Cheers, Mr. Frank Perry. show you something. The white van's on hire. The guy sitting in it is an Iranian intelligence officer based at the London Embassy. He's been watching your house for the last four days. He's doing 12-hour shifts around the clock, waiting for you to crack and go home.
Tom. He won't think twice about blowing you up with your son beside you. What are the police doing? I'm sorry. I assumed you knew. He's my friend. My best man. Bastard. They're gonna give you 110,000 pounds. Less the price of a car, less three months rent. You think that's fair, do you? 100 grand for a life. It's what they're prepared to give you. Thanks, Mickey. For a minute there, I thought he was the angel bloody Gabriel. <laughs> you got references? Experience? Yeah. It's the busiest time of year for us. Condoms. Yeah, upmarket. Mm. Exotic. All kicks off again tomorrow. My motto is, the customer always comes first. <laughs> Quite droll, as it goes. What they say? They can come Thursday week. The other lot end of the next month. Oh, lazy sods. I can get it running for tomorrow morning, then I'll come back that evening, strip it properly, and it'll be all right for a year, then. I need the work. Here on. I tell people I'm in cosmetics when they ask, which isn't often. So how long have you been here? Too long. How long will I stay? I need the work. Fair enough. How was your Christmas? It's fine. It's fine. I had Stephen with me. Stephen? Yeah, my son. Christmas is about kids, really, isn't it? You seem a long way away suddenly. No, I was just thinking about what you said. Can I buy you a drink? Yeah, all right. Was he? Oh, he was really good boy. Good. Very good boy. Good. I'm so thankful for you stepping in like that. There you go. Thank you very much. See you Night. soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. That was lovely. Well, can I see you again? Yeah, why not? Well, I'll call you. Night. Happy New Year. That was lovely. But you go out with someone you don't know and you try and find common ground. Families, work, holidays, where you've been. It's just you've told me nothing about yourself. I can't. I'm sorry, but that's the way it has to be with me. No past, no history. There's nothing I can do about it.
Did you do something terrible? Sorry. Don't you want to know about me? No right to ask. I've never told anyone about Stephen. My mum and dad, they died before he was born. It was seven years ago where I was working. The office party. I suppose someone spiked my drink. Or maybe I just drank too much. I didn't know who had sex with me. Anyway, I got pregnant with Stephen. I don't regret it. I mean, <laughs> how it happened, yeah, I regret that, but not having Stephen. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm sorry. But I can't trade confessions. I just can't do it. But how do I know if I can trust you? I mean, if you won't tell me anything, I've no idea who you are. I know. It's completely unfair. Picture a Suffolk coastal village. Three beds, two receptions, kitchen, bathroom, utility room. Renovation needed, must be seen. Be nice for you. <laughs> it's a home for a family. What would I be? You could be whatever you wanted to be. Can you afford it? I've got a bit of money put by. We could do it. Could we? Look, I screwed my life up once. I'm not about to do it again. We could make it work. How do you know? Because I've decided. Come on, you. Nice, though. Can we come back here tomorrow, Mum? Maybe. Now, quick, or we'll be late to school. Come on. Come on, run. How could you let him go out in that state? Relax. He's absolutely fine. Have you seen my seats? in Newbury, Berkshire. It's regarding his son, Thomas Hughes, who is dangerously ill in hospital. Would Mr. Gavin Hughes please get in touch with the Royal County Hospital, Newbury? I'm looking for Tom Hughes. You'd come. Nothing could have stopped me. How is he? He's got meningitis. But he's going to be all right. They thought it was meningococcal, but they gave him the lumbar puncture. It isn't, thank God. Don't. No, don't. He needs his rest. He 
He's grown so much. Yeah, well, he would. It's been four years. The radio said... Yeah. I know. I was very scared. He had a temperature of 103. He's been really, really lucky. Are they sure there are no complications? You almost sound as though you care. I didn't come here to have a row. They've put him on antibiotics. They say he's doing very well. He was calling out for you and he had the fever. Oh, thanks. That makes me feel really good. For God's sake, can you stop thinking about yourself for just one minute? I'm his father, Janice. No, Gavin, you were his father. Downstairs, he'd heard it on the radio and said, Was he one of yours? I rang the hospital. I spoke to a nurse who said she'd seen a man who answered Perry's description. Oh, what an imbecile. Well, you can hardly blame him, can you? I mean, given the circumstances. Don't talk rubbish. Of course, I blame him. It's insanely irresponsible. It was his son, for God's sake. Will you try telling the Iranians that? Well, what would you have done? That is beside the point. If we know about this, who else does? to the decrypt later. It's the Ministry of Information and Security in Tehran, right? And to Riyadh? Yes. Need that fix. Good man. Get a move on, you guys. We have gone all day here. Eight years I've hunted this guy. And this is the closest I've got. He's Iranian. No name. No face. Only a code. Anvil. He's an alpha killer. Always leaves the same footprints. They call him back for the briefing. Then Alamut in the mountains for spiritual comfort. And then the hit. Wherever. I would if I could. I'm just too busy. Yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks, yeah? I really don't have the time. Hello, Frank. He's my son. Did you notice anything at the hospital? Anybody watching you? No. Well, you're going to have to move. We're going to have to do this all over again. No way. We've had calls from the Americans. They want information on a Frank Perry. Now, we have to assume that you're in serious danger. I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. 
Merrills and Stevens. We've worked hard to get it the way we want it. We're happy here. Now, if we need protecting, then you protect us. Is that your last word? This is where I stay. Now, you tell your bosses that. Who'd you mean? The man in the grey car. I just saw him leave. Don't lie to me, Frank. He was from before. How did he know where to find you? I don't know, he just did. Frank. Just leave it. It's not important. Of course it's important. It's important to me. Don't keep bottling it up like this. We're part of your life, Frank, whether you like it or not. Just tell me. I can't. Look at you. You're shaking. You can't keep pushing me away like this. I've put up with this secrecy, but I won't stand for lies. Just tell me. Just leave it. Please. Just give me some time. The uh, FBI, the Saudi office, got a lead on Frank Perry formerly known as Gavin Hughes. Now, up until a couple of days ago, there was no connection between these two names. Now there is. It would help if we knew the exact extent of Iran's anger with Hughes Perry. That operation's restricted information, I'm afraid, George, even to you. And me. Then how are we supposed to arrive at a realistic threat level assessment if we don't know what happened? Well, I can at least tell you that the Iranians are extremely angry. If he does decide to stay where he is, he's going to need protection, George. That's inescapable. That sort of protection can cost anything, up to a million a year. You can't just hang him out to dry. Well, he's been useful to us. He's been an asset. Well, you can't, can you? I mean, someone's got to look after him, and he knows it. Well, one call from Perry to the tabloids, and... Well, we're going to have to reach some sort of accommodation over this. We just don't have that sort of money. FBI Riyadh, Mr. Littlebaum. Speaking. Jeff Markham, we met at a debrief here in London. Uh, about four years ago. So we did. What can I do for you? It's about uh, Frank Perry. Well, then you have my undivided attention. Perry was formerly a salesman, Gavin Hughes. I'm trying to assess. Come again? Well, I'm trying to put together a threat level assessment. No, no, that name again. Who did you say? Gavin Hughes, the guy we debriefed in Iran. <sighs> You got him inside your Fort Knox? No, he's at home. We offered to relocate, but he won't shift. He's adamant. Hear me carefully, Jeff. It's a top man who's coming. The best. And Perry keeps asking me why. Why the big deal all of a sudden? I don't know what to tell him. Look, this isn't the proper format for this type of conversation. I'm going to be on the next plane to London. We can maybe talk then. In the meantime, can I give you some advice? Of course. You put some hardware next to him. Maybe some Marines. One day a month, a special branch put Winston Smith, a hospital porter, now known as Yusuf Khan, under surveillance. It's all their resources permit. He's from one of those little groups bankrolled by the Iranian embassy. He went shopping this morning, combat survival gear. Spent three weeks wages, including boots two sizes too small for him, then bought a map. 
He's not at work, and he's not at his home address. The map? The Suffolk coast. What a coincidence. Stand by and do nothing when anyone insults Islam, then you will go to hell. I really believe that. But if you're strong enough to fight the enemies of the faith, kill them if you have to. However you have to, then you will go to heaven. It's as simple as that. The embassy man told me what we have to do. And he left this. One that I said was from before. His name's Jeff. He works for the Secret Intelligence Service. He wanted me to move on again. Leave everything behind. You to move. Yes. Everything behind meaning us, me and Stephen. Yes. Why? I used to work for a company that made agricultural machinery. I was a salesman. Pretty good one at that. I had to visit Iran regularly because of my job. But the Iranians weren't just using the machines for agricultural purposes. They were mixing weapons-grade material in them. I was paid well to keep my mouth shut. The British intelligence service found out what was going on and and made me pass on information to them. A spy, if you like. I don't know what they did with that information. They kept things pretty close to their chest. But one day they said, because of what I told them, my life was in danger, and I had to leave everything, become somebody else. My family wouldn't come with me. Your family. I had a wife and a son, Tom. He's ten years old. That day I left in a hurry. There was an emergency appeal on the radio. It said that Tom was dangerously ill. I know it was a stupid thing to do, but I was worried sick. I had to see him. I broke my cover. And um, was he? No, he was okay. They they caught it in time. And his mother, your wife. What about her? Is she still your wife? I don't think so. You don't think so? It was a divorce, but I never actually signed the papers. The security service fixed it somehow. They can do what they like. I have wanted to tell you this ever since we first met, ever since that first meal in the restaurant. The security service said the more that you knew, the more that you'd be in danger, both of you. I'm sorry. Meryl. You love somebody and then all of a sudden you find out they're not that person at all. You know, there, there's this whole other life you knew nothing about. A wife, a child. So I don't know what to think. Will you move again? No. I've drawn a line. This is where I stay. If you'll have me, that is. You did before. You ran out on them. I'm not even married to you. But come on, you see, that was different. How? Because I'd rather die than lose you. The little worm's got a photograph of his code name, Anvil, a remote camera in the Riyadh Souk. It's running now. Good. Uh, he's flying in tomorrow. Give the boys at Eurostar and Dover something to go on. Uh -huh.
We don't know where Anvil's contacts are. We don't know how he's armed, and we don't know how he's getting here. And now we don't know what he looks like. There is a sitting target. Good day. Bye. Mr. Perry, Detective Sergeant Bill Davies, Special Branch Protection. They uh, told you I was coming. Perry's been assigned two protection officers, one for days and one for nights. Did you say two? It's a matter of resources. This is British understatement, right? I mean, you, you know what you've got here, don't you? It comes from an ancient culture. Where it differs from Christianity is in its passion and intensity. That's what makes Anvil so lethal. For him, death in his cause is not to be feared. It means a glorious martyrdom. And now, this highly trained, fearless killer is heading straight for your backyard. And you're telling me it's a matter of resources. Mr. Littlebaum, I understand the seriousness of the threat. If it were up to me, he would have 20 men surrounding him. This man has made fools of security services all over the Middle East. He goes in and out of a country like a ghost. You'll need your very best men on this. And plenty of them.
least think about it. It'll only be for a couple of days. You take Stephen up to Norfolk. He likes it up there. And when this is all over, we can get back to normal. You'd both be safe up there, and I'd know that you were safe. When I was working in that lousy factory for Sammy Cargill, and we were living in that horrible flat, I used to dream about me and Stephen getting a, a little place together. You know, somewhere we could breathe. Away from the noise and the litter and the ugliness everywhere you looked. And then it came true. It was like a miracle. If we went away, we might come back and find it had all gone. I know it sounds funny, but I feel safer here. All right. But if things get worse, promise me you'll think about it. Please. The attack on the bus was carried out by the Israelis. The Golani Brigade. They made no mistake. Everyone on board was killed instantly. All 24 of them. Needless to say, you didn't hear any of this from me. In fact, you didn't hear any of it at all. But killing Perry won't do anything for their weapons program. True. But Anvil's mission is about something much more profound than mere weapons. He will regard it as his sacred duty to destroy Perry. An eye for an eye. But I want him, Jeff. More than anything else in my life, I want this guy nailed once and for all. At any cost? At any cost. Is this him? The one they lost? Yusuf Khan. Before that Winston something. It must have been quite some crash. Actually, he was strangled. Did they find anything? Apart from a wetsuit, no. No boots two sizes too small for him. No map of Suffolk either. We're beefing up the firepower there. Not before time, some might argue. Have my people sanctioned that? They don't have a choice. Unless they want to see Perry on a slab. You see Stephen? Chicken. Oh, nice one. They give me the info yet? Yeah, the uh, PO's an SB, Sergeant Davis. Useless. Who's in charge? The spooks. Totally useless. What's the principle? Civilian. Offered the chance to run, wouldn't. Opposition? You ran. The target's up the Muller's noses. Well, that's clever, isn't it? We got back up. Yeah, kind of. The locals. Yeah. Utterly bloody useless. Cabinets. Yeah, have to tape it. I need to get these pictures down from the wall. Yeah, now the stuff off the mantel piece. Great, the windows aren't laminated. Excuse me, can I have a word, please? Yes, sir. No, it may not have occurred to you two, but we live here. Now, we never invited you in here. We don't want you here, but we're stuck with you. So please, a little more consideration. Right, you are, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll have to do something about the china. Ornaments. Peanut butter sandwiches, yeah? Oh, wicked! Bye, Mum! Bye. Mrs. Perry! Could I have a word? 
inside, please. That man's grossly irresponsible behaviour yesterday could have led to a tragic accident. I needn't remind you that the safety of the children is paramount. What are you saying exactly? I've discussed the matter at length with the staff and the governors. We've decided that it's in the best interests of the school for Stephen to be temporarily withdrawn. You can't do that to a child. He's completely innocent in all this. He has a right to be here. Barry, can't you... If Mr. Perry's at risk, then so is Stephen. So are all the pupils and staff. Everyone's at risk. I can't allow that state of affairs to continue. It's best if Stephen absents himself. But why, Mum? Never mind. It's only for a little while. close to him so that he can look into my eyes so that I can see his fear I didn't know it was guarded it wasn't when I took the photos how will you do it he must not tear it before he dies I'm James O'Brien. Welcome to A Night With Me. What do you fancy, Chinese or Thai? Mm, Chinese, mate. Give it a minute less than it says. Will do, Dave. It's always best to do a rice a minute under. Oh, it's, uh, it's not rice, it's uh, noodles. Same thing. Roger that, Houston. We have liftoff. ETA 30 seconds. Bloody starving. I'll be mum. You loved it enough. Cheers. Dinner is served. Holy oh, shit! Contact, contact, sector two! Contact, contact, back guard, contact! Back on, contact! It's contact, he's here! Get in there! Get in there! Get in there! Stephen! Oh, Stephen! Oh, Stephen! Oh, Stephen! Oh, Stephen! Get down, you're in the line of fire! Stephen! Yeah, sweet so bits being a game, it'll all be over in a minute, yeah? It'll be over in a minute. Give me your mouth and put your jacket on. Is he 
Sector three, sector three. Oh, he's all over us. Blake, are you reading me? Yeah, receiving, receiving. I'm away. One minute. Dave, where are you? Shit. Dave, where are you? On the arse. Come back. I've got him. I've got him. He's down the side of the house. What's he carrying? Looks like an AK. Oh, shit, he's gone again. He must be down the front. Well, I almost thought he'd show himself. Bloody hell. <laughs> he's on us. Round spike. Front door. Front door. Put that weapon down. You're not authorised. Put it down. You're breaking the law. Stop the law. Where the hell are you? Jeff Markham, security service. Bill Davis, special branch. Uh, here it's been a bit lively. Mm, just a bit. Are you sure he bounced him? Well, what do you reckon? Right, we've got a mobile patrol off the road at the end of the village and there's a dog team out here. Good. I'll catch you later, yeah? Yeah. Are you okay? I am. I remember that Stephen could have been killed. But how did he get this far? I mean, they've got all that firepower, they let him get to the front door. Well, he's one man at night with miles of wilderness to hide in. I'm sure they did their best. Do you think he'll be back? Yeah, I think he will. Me too. Look, for what it's worth, you're now going to get some backup. And whose idea was that? Mine, is it Adam's? You all right, Andy? Jeff? Looks like somewhere out in the Middle Ages. Come to think of it, so do you. Bloody poachers, they use anything. You took some finding. Good, that's the way I like it. These yours? Birds, Jeff, don't belong to anybody. I'll take care of them. How's it all going? I'm all right, and you? Yeah, so-so. Could get to you if you let it. And do you let it? I've been asking myself that question. Well, you're not just come here to pass the time of day. What do you want? I need a favour, Andy. Let me see it. If you don't show me where it hurts, I can't help you. later with something for that and some food. Right. 
this is your idea, is it? Buffalo Bill. His name's Andy Chalmers. Well, there's three dozen coppers out there, ARVs, you name it. Oh, yeah, and they found him, have they? Well, they're on top of it, and they're trained men. I mean, where'd you dredge him up from? We work together in Ulster. If your boys had done their job, he wouldn't have to be here. This is my show, Mark. Yeah, maybe, but he's here with my authority. This man's tracked killers in some of the most hostile territory on Earth. So get off your high horse and show him some respect, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you need? No. When will I hear from you? As soon as I've got something to say. Go on. You've been frightened. I don't mean frightened, frightened. I mean scared. Shit. Scared. Does it tell you something? I'm shit scared. Yeah, I know. You know the worst thing? The fact that he's out there and he, and he could be back any second. It's the fact that I don't know what I did. See, nobody ever told me, not you. Well, that stuck up cow. Because I'm not important enough. I'm the one this whole thing is about. I'm not important enough. You know, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you smug bastard. Are you sure you want this? I'm listening. I said I'm listening. The last time you came back from Iran, you told us about a celebration party. A party for the weapons research base. The people you called your friends. The Israelis were there to do the dirty work, men from the Galani Brigade flown to Saudi Arabia, then ferried by the American Navy across the Persian Gulf. Your friends were going to the restaurant by bus, correct? By the time they left the complex, a reception committee of Israeli commandos was already in position. About 10 minutes after the bus set off, they were stopped at a fake checkpoint. A two kilogram limpet bomb was attached to the bus over the petrol tank. It was a simple timing device boys from the Galani Brigade disabled all the emergency exits so that when the bomb was detonated, no one could get out. The lucky ones were sat right on top of it. The others, blind panic, fighting each other just to get out. The information that you brought back made that attack possible and led to the deaths of 24 people. It delayed Iran's nuclear weapons program by maybe 18 months. 18 months? Why, you don't think that's much? Most of Iran's neighbors either have weapons of mass destruction or are developing them. Iran can't afford to be left behind. That's why Tehran is targeting you. You asked to be told, and now you know. For what it's worth, I think what you did was courageous. Twenty-four people. I know every one of them. Ahmed. Farah. 
They thought I was their friend. You heard all what Jeff said. Mm. 18 months. I bought them a bit of time. If I'd known what they were going to do, what was going to happen? But the point is, you didn't know, did you? What about the bombs that didn't get made? You probably saved a lot of lives. We don't know that for sure, can we? Well, he said you delayed it. Yeah, he said. He was just trying to make me feel better. All I cared about was myself and staying out of prison. Where are you going? Downstairs. safety. shot when it mattered. Just uh, give us a couple of minutes, don't we? Sure. Right. What's on your mind, Frank? I spoke to Davis last night. He's never shot anyone. In fact, none of them have. They don't even know if they could. You call that protection? It's a joke. Well, isn't it a joke? What are you talking about? I'm a sitting duck here. That man out there, you want him to get to me so you can get to him. I'm just a, a piece of bait. No, that's not what it is. All right, then you tell me what it is. Because I've been sitting up all night trying to work it out. Uh, Frank. I refuse to move on. You say you'll protect me and then you get this law. All right, shut up! Now listen to yourself. You think all this dog patrols, mobile patrol unit, the best bloody track in the country is about leaving you to die? Get a grip! Now, you're right, I'm not here because I like you. If you want the truth, I don't give a shit about you. But I'm here to do a job and I'm buggered if I'm going to see you die. You got it? The boss was asking if I knew where you were. I had to make something up. I didn't know what to tell her. Cold, is it? I bet you're not coming in. I tell you what you've got here, and you've got the bloody police here. They're crawling all over your desk, they are. What are you up to?
happy. Not tonight. But when you go back home, they'll accept me in Iran, won't they? After what I've done for you. Please. When the ship comes to pick you up. If the press get hold of it, that's my summer season bugger. Who'd want to come on holiday if there's guns all over the place? Jane will lose all her babysitting from the holiday lads. One way or another, that's going to cost this village a fortune. We reckon it's time we got off our asses. Pleased with yourselves. You just frightened the life out of a woman and a ten-year-old child. What's happened to you, lot? You're our friends. Our children go to the same school. We drink in the same pub. We help each other. When you get home tonight, take a long look at yourselves. Take a long look in that mirror. And see if you like what you see. Look, I know Rose Cottage isn't exactly Des Res at the moment, but you'd be most welcome. I'm afraid we're still knee-deep in packing cases. Thank you. That's very kind. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Nothing you wouldn't get in a rugby scrum, eh? I still can't believe those people out there. I mean, we know every one of them. It's like they've gone mad. Yeah, it's a kind of madness. Anyway, look, just give us a ring. We'd be more than happy to help. Thank you. I honestly think you'd be better off with them, Mrs. Perry, both you and Stephen. I'm not Mrs. Perry, and we'd rather stay. Look, it wouldn't be for long. No. No, really. It's kind of them, but I think... Just go! All right, the pair of you. Just get out. Leave. So angry. It's 
got to him, you know, the pressure and the worry and the disappointment. We've only got each other. Him, me and Stephen, it's just us. He will be all right, won't he? He'll be fine. And you're much better off here. The man we want is injured, and he's alone, and he's surrounded. It's only going to be a matter of time. Guns in the house. I'm telling you. Now he's gone, they want you there. You're walking right into their trap. I saw the family leaving in the car. You will take me with you, won't you? On the ship. Tomorrow night when it comes, you will. You will take me. They thought you might like a nightcap. Thanks. You knew Frank before, didn't you? Did you ever meet his family? Yeah, once. What were they like? It was the night you had to leave. I don't think it was going very well with his wife. It must be very hard for you. I don't know what I find harder, the other life, or why he had to leave it. I've always wondered if the past would ever come back. He'd never talk about it. But now it has, I've found out things about him that I don't know if I can ever deal with. I think losing you would destroy him. Well, it's not the other family. It's not even the fact that he was responsible for all those people being killed. He didn't know it was going to happen, did he? It's just that I thought I knew him. And I didn't really know him at all. Well, who knows anyone when it comes to it? I mean, we only know what they want us to. At least he was honest. Maybe sometimes it's better not to know. Finish it, did you? What was this thing? Yeah, but where's the body? After seven years, it's finally double tapping. You didn't bring him down. Shut it! Just come as soon as you can. Thank you. Oh. Oh, I've got to get to 
the ship. This place is crawling with police. It's not your fault you didn't get him. It's mine. But I did my best. You know I did. Come on, please. If you're captured... Don't leave me. Please, don't leave me. Stephen? I'm sorry, Frank. She's dead, isn't she? Yes. I, I don't understand. I thought she was going to be safe. He, he uh, must have thought that you'd all gone over, seen a shadow or I shouted at her. I meant it for the best. The last thing I ever did was shout at her. I, I want to see her. He shot through the window. It went everywhere. I don't care. I want to see her. I can't let you do that, Frank. He's still out there, you see. It's best if you stay here with Stephen. Where were you? Why wasn't somebody looking after her? She wasn't the target. There was no reason to think that she was at risk. You told me she would be safe. You promised me she would be safe! He's over there. Well, how do you know? See that bird? Keeps going back to the same spot. So? Well, he knows where he's well off. No, they'd only screw it up. Andy?
She preferred it in the winter because it was... There was no one around. Didn't matter if it was raining. Or if it was cold. Didn't seem to bother us. She said we had to make up for lost time. I don't care anymore. You listen. The man who killed Meryl is over there. If you don't care about yourself, care for her sake and for Stevens. He needs a father. I killed 24 people. I killed Meryl! No! Frank! Frank! Sending me. See you. Yeah. yeah. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I'm you. Mm. <laughs> he could be anybody, couldn't he? In a strange way, he got what he wanted. He's welcome to it. I was beginning to think we'd never get him. Do you think they'll try again? You have a body. Your government will make Iran very aware of that. After that, self-interest takes over. Everybody pretends it never happened. Commerce is king. The oil goes on flowing. The world turns. I thought I'd feel great. How about you? You'll probably get a promotion. As a matter of fact, before I came down here, I was thinking about getting out. To do what? Well, exactly. 
Whatever your reservations, strikes me you and the service are a good fit. I've got a witness to prove it. Thank you. be an end of it. Yeah. Yeah, it will. You don't have to run anymore. I hope it works out for you, Frank. 